sorry. I need you here to cover while I'm at Fort Bliss. Uh, your messages, sir. Later, Carl. Right? Uh, nothing from you, Major Hawkins. Nothing is all I'm getting today. <laughs> Major Hawkins must have got up on the wrong side of the bump this morning. Are you kidding? That's so nice as he's been three days. So how's the computer? All fixed. It was just a short between the terminal and the direct memory unit. Ace remembered where it was. <laughs> Hi, Lola. Hi, Del. Hello there. Hello, Tony. I have never noticed before just how big and beautiful those eyes are. Thanks. I think it's the glasses. <laughs> Maxwell, I think he's talking about Lola's eyes. Oh. Well, her eyes are nice, too. Thank you, Maxwell. Shut up, Ace. <laughs> Ray, uh, have you seen my monogram gold ballpoint pen? No. Come off it, weasel. That's Wessel. We know you're not here looking for any pen. That's right. We know why you're here. You're here to spy on us, and they go slithering back to Major Hawkins and tell him everything that we say. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys think you're so important. Believe me, I have bigger fish to spy. Uh, fry. Out, weasel. Wessel. I heard that. You poisoned your dog's mind against me. Sick. That Wessel's the sweetheart of a guy. Hey, you're not supposed to be reading that. This here says for Colonel Clapp's eyes only. So you know I got to read it. Now hold it. Don't read yet. Great. I found my pen. Don't fight him. He'll show it to Major Hawkins. Okay, Bell. Now, what's that note say? That's a message for Colonel Clapp from an advertising agency. They want to rent the base to film a commercial. And why are you dialing the phone? Why is he dialing the phone? It's obvious. Look at his eyes. He's in a money frenzy. Camp Tar Creek calling Mr. Jerry Gilmore. Hey, Butch, will you get Sundance off the phone? <laughs> Yeah, hi, Jer. Tony Baker here, a creative director, Tar Creek Productions. Yeah, well, about the commercial, uh, what's the product? Commando Aftershave, fabulous men's cologne. Oh, I love it. I use it all the time. Well, it's not on the market yet. Well, uh, when it comes out, I'll use it all the time, and so will all of America. Now, what about terms? Now, wait a minute, Jerry. If we're going to discuss dollars, let me put you with our uh, production manager, Tyrone Valentine. Uh, Jer, Val. Val, Jer. Hello, Jer. Val. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's fine. With, oh, yes, that's fine with us. Yeah, the usual price. Yeah, $50 per day per man. This is going to be big trouble. Sets, props? Oh, then you want to speak to Tony? Uh, Jerry? Tone. Tone, Jerry. Hi, uh, Jerry? Tone. <laughs> no, absolutely. The standard fee for the use of the post. Uh, equipment rental. Uh, oh, that's fine. Oh, you have a good life, too, Jerry. We'll see you real soon, huh? And bless you. Well, we are tops in TV. Oh, we'll see how tops in TV you two are going to be when Major Hawkins finds out you rented out the base for an aftershave commercial. Hey, that's not my problem. I'm in production. TV here is in PR. Well, you and TB will be sharing the bread and water suite in the guardhouse. I'm telling you, Major Hawkins is a bear today. The hawk is a bear? <laughs> Clap is going to observe the airborne exercises at Fort Bliss. And Major Hawkins is upset because he can't be there to jump with his old outfit. That's it? He's upset because he can't jump out of an airplane? Maybe you won't understand, sir, being in a computer outfit. But when men hit the silk at 500 feet, they all have one thing in common. Short legs? <laughs> if you'll excuse me, sir. Don't leave it a hot hawk. Did you men want to see me? Uh, yes, sir. Boy, Hawkins seemed a little edgy today. Edgy? He hasn't been that mad since he lost his G. Gordon Liddy wristwatch. <laughs> yeah, that's wrong. The little hand on the 12 and the big hand on the flame. Well, you have to understand the man. He marches to a different drum. He also marches through doors, sir. Uh, yeah. What we're talking about here, sir, is a classic case of the old fire horse. Major Hawkins is a man of action, and he's suffering from a lack of action. That's why as ranking NCO, I can cover the base while you're both gone then why don't I take Major Hawkins to Fort Bliss and let him jump with his old outfit? Is he brilliant? Brilliant! That's why the Army gave us the stripes and they gave you the bird. Bird? As symbolism, sir. <laughs> Count 
accounted for, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. At ease, men. As you know, I will be observing the maneuvers at Fort Bliss today. I am also very proud to announce that Major Hawkins has volunteered to jump with his old outfit to the honor and glory of Camp Tar Creek. The entire unit will free fall from a height of 15,000 feet, grasping hands to form the profiles of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. <laughs> now that's symbolic. <laughs> Major. Would you like to speak to the men? No. Oh. If you insist, sir. Good morning, men. Good, Good morning, sir. sir. Today, I am jumping with the 99th Airborne Rangers, the best trained, best disciplined fighting men in the world. These people are wrecking machines, which is what we are all supposed to be, right? Yes, sir. Not soft computer jockeys afraid of their own shadows. Right? Yes, sir! Well, you will have a chance to prove to me you are more than the sugar-coated, pampered sissies that you appear to be. Is there one of you here, just one who has enough guts to volunteer to jump with me today? No, sir! As I thought. And do you want to know why? No, sir! Because you are soft, mindless, spineless candy faces who push buttons instead of soldiering. Yes, sir! <laughs> That's all, Colonel. That was inspiring, Hawk. <laughs> Men, in our absence, the NCO in charge will be Sergeant Valentine. We, of course, will maintain close contact from Fort Bliss ComCon by a satellite relay patched into our base command console. Or you can call us on the pay phone behind the mess hall. <laughs> Good backup system, Maxwell. <laughs> Sergeant, dismiss the men. Yes, sir. Y'all heard what the man said. I am now the main man in charge. And my first command decision is to have a month in sale on three-day passes. It will be available at the chow hall. No personal checks, please. Now, let us move out and get going. Hut, 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 Three fours. Three SXS. We got a lot. The ad agency just called. They said Jerry Gilmore would be here in about a half an hour. Perfect. Things are going just as we planned. Yeah, now all we gotta do is get to plan B, Operation Weasel. Well, how are you gonna get rid of him? Don't worry. Guys like that get rid of themselves. Yeah, all he needs a little new gene. <laughs> Hello, Weasel. It's Wessel. You guys are up to something, aren't you? Oh, come on, not us, Weasel. That's Wes. Just remember, I'm watching every move you make. Oh, come on, Wessel. That's Weasel. Oh, now, come on. We should stop all this fussing and fighting and lying on each other. We're all army buddies. Pal. Hey, 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 don't you... Whoa! Everybody saw that. This man attacked me. Medic! Help! Medic! Attacking an NCO, that's a very serious charge. And we have you locked up till we can file formal charges. We all saw the whole ugly thing. What a shock. An unprovoked attack and on a minority. <laughs> Surprised at you, Weasel. That's Wessel. Now look, please, I didn't mean... Ah! What? He's attacking me again! Get him in the guardhouse! Hold, hold, hold! No, you're not gonna get away with this. All right, I'm taking notes. What's your name, soldier? Huh? <laughs> well, now that we got rid of that Benedict, no, Mr. Baker here will explain to y'all the main plan of attack. All right, now, don't ask us how we did it, but we got you top acting dollars for commercials. 30 bucks a piece. 30 bucks. I thought it was 50. 15, exactly. <laughs> but we made those creeps double it. Double, okay? Oh, no. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, okay, don't thank us, don't thank us, guys. Because y'all are main men, we went all the way for y'all. All the way. That's it. Thirty dollars a stinks. <laughs> What's wrong with thirty bucks? I know for a fact Al Pacino makes five million a picture. Ricardo Montalban and the little guy are making a bundle off of Fantasy Island, not to mention what Ricardo gets for those car commercials. I say it again, 30 bucks a stinks. Okay, 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 hold on, hold on, take 
easy, guys. We're going to go back in there, and we're going to tell those Madison Avenue button-downs there will not be a roll, there will not be an action, there will not be an intro film shot until our men get $40 a day. That's right. Hello! <laughs> Man, you won't make it a big mistake. You're not going to make a big mistake. I have friends in high places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's your code. Tell Vittorio, like chrome double Yeah, thank you. Let's take a look at some of these things. How's sound going, guys? You look great. It stinks. Here, have a luger. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, that's marvelous, darling. Wardrobe! But you're gonna look sensational in this peasant girl outfit. Billy! Don't shout! I can hear you! And I like the bathing suit. <laughs> Billy, I'm the director. Back to the field! Sponge to the left, Yanks to the right! Ichigo, please! Uh -oh. Hawkins is back. I know you may think this looks a little crazy, but there's a good reason for this. And, uh, Baker here has an explanation. Uh, uh yes, sir. I... You're wasting your time. What do you mean? He's a little out of it. They, uh, gave him a very strong painkiller. <laughs> Clerk, sir. Uh, the manager here is a very tough guy. Very tough man. Very tough. I know. It took four of us to get the shot into him. Uh, the... <laughs> Toronto! Goes again. He did that once on the freeway. <sighs> Must have been quite a sight. Yeah, there's a state cop will never forget it, I'll tell you. <laughs> What's this? Traffic ticket. The guy charged him with loitering in a 55-mile zone. How long is he gonna be like this? Not long. About an hour or so. Well, I guess you can uh, run along now. Thanks a lot. We really appreciate it. Okay. See ya. Thanks. It's been one hell of a day for me, I'll tell you. Come on, let's get him back to his quarters. No, I got a better idea. Oh, we only got an hour. Oh. Ah. Oh. I gotta get out of here. Major's depending on me. I gotta get out of here. I can't let them outsmart me. <laughs> Places, everybody. Let's stay together on this, okay? Ichiko, please, coffee. <laughs> who's this? Uh, this is a major who's been wounded in the war. And he wouldn't have been hit if he was wearing commando aftershave. He looks a little unconscious. Uh, well, he's just getting into the part, yeah? I love it. <laughs> All right, Germans, are you ready? Hey. Now, Americans, remember, you're losing the war until you get commando aftershave splashed on your face. And Germans, if you do get hit by a tank, please lie still till you hear me yell cut. And I want to hear some Rausch, Achtung, Schnell. Rausch, Achtung, Schnell. Rausch, Achtung, Schnell. Tung? Schnell? Germans. In Tar Creek? They're trying to drive me crazy. They're trying to gaslight me. Perfect, perfect. They're gonna love this. This man hasn't moved all afternoon. He's so mad, isn't he? Yeah, we told you, he's getting into his part. Uh, can we shoot Jerry? It's getting dark, you know? Oh, yeah. Okay, everybody know their parts? Yeah, I cover Baker with the carbine, then I throw a hand grenade. Cut. I pulled the wounded major from in front of the tank. Cut to... And I got hit on top of the head for a measly $40. <laughs> Roll cameras. Action.
love men who wear commando. <laughs> Major Hawkins in the moment he arrives. Right, sir. Oh, he made me so proud of him yesterday after the jump while they were setting his leg. Really, sir? I had never actually seen anyone bite a bullet before. <laughs> and, and you know, I heard that this morning he took off his own cast. He did. Oh, he's the last of a rare breed, a real dinosaur. <laughs> Good morning, Major. How's the leg? The leg is fine, sir. It's these other scratches and bruises I can't figure out. I feel like I've been dragged all over the post. Oh, well, you're just a little tired, Hawk, like an old fire horse. But you're back in the barn now. A well-cared-for barn, I might add, thanks to your men. I don't know, sir. There's something about this particular barn that just doesn't smell right. Uh, it's funny. The moment you walked in, I, I felt something of the sort myself. I went to my office. Oh, oh, fine, Gray. It's nothing that I can put my finger on, sir. Just little things. Tank tracks. Hobnail boot prints. I swear I saw bomb craters in the parade ground. And then I woke up reeking of cologne this morning, sir. Reeking's not like you, Hawk. But that's the point, sir. I've never worn cologne in my entire life. I shave like a man, sir. Dry with a straight razor. And then I splash on a little wood alcohol to stop the bleeding. I tell you, sir, there's something wrong here. Oh, it's just your imagination, Major. After all, you had quite a bump on your head yesterday. You were probably hallucinating. Hallucinating, sir? What about this? Hey, is this the new Class A hat? <laughs> sir, that's a German Army field cap. I woke up wearing it this morning. You woke up wearing a Nazi field cap? And reeking of cheap cologne? That's a real puzzle, Hawk. A puzzle, sir? Well, then, let's just check the two missing pieces. Valentine and Baker. By gum, you may have something there, Hawk. Corporal Gray, have Baker and Valentine report in here on the double. Uh, this is PFC Yamato, sir. Corporal Gray ran over to the day room with Baker and Valentine. They're looking at those commercials they made. Commercials? <laughs> for a moment of TV history. Our first commercial, take it back. And to lead it off, an exciting scene starring me. Watch out, Billy D. Yeah. Yeah. I love men who wear commando. <laughs> You're at attention, Sergeant. Yes, sir, I certainly am. Yes, sir. You and Baker stand away from that TV set. What TV set, sir? <laughs> that TV set. I didn't see a TV set. Tone, did you see a TV set? Uh, no, could you describe it to us, sir? Move it! <laughs> so this is your little game, huh? Using a United States Army post filming cheap commercials for profit? Well, you see, sir, we... Uh, what we? 40 a stinking box, you guys can take the rap alone. I did it for Ace. I did it for the wardrobe. The tank tracks, the boots, the cap. It all adds up now. Right, Hawkin. Don't forget that awful cologne you're wearing. Thank you, sir. I think that a court-martial would be too lenient. We're talking company punishment here. That way I can give it my own personal touch. <laughs> uh, sir, you're right. We should be severely punished. I wonder if you could wait a week or two before you laid the heavy stuff on us. What? You know, sir, it's the darndest thing uh, Jerry wants us for his next cornflakes commercial. We're going to be fresh fruits. You people are insane. But, sir, they want you too. Billy says he has a banana suit just your size. A banana suit? Just kidding, sir. Well, just kid this. Hard labor, extra duty, no privileges, and, if I can arrange it, vlogging for everyone here whose face appears on that screen. Uh, Hawk, do you really mean that about every face? Absolutely, sir. There are no exceptions. 
Well, by George, then I think you're going to have a problem. Look, Hawk. Commando. That's very clever. But what I said still goes. There will be company punishment for you, 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 and me. <laughs> That's an order. Gee, I'm sorry about that. Sir, he was awfully hard on us. Oh, no, not that. It's just that he would have made such a wonderful banana. <laughs> Do you not consider being a banana, sir? Me? Yeah. Oh. It would be great. Oh, oh, that would be bad. Bad. At ease. We'll continue in a moment. Dirty. It's heavy too, boy. I never saw that Major Hawkins so mad in my life. I've never seen anybody so mad. A banana suit really pushed him over the edge. Good thing he didn't fling us into the guardhouse. Guardhouse? We forgot to get Wessel out. You gotta look into that. How does Thursday look? <laughs> I'm sick. I need medical attention. invade a hospital to spring their wounded accomplice and take Fran and Stacy hostage with a threat to kill T.J. Hooker. Then Gopher's uncle creates havoc when he plunges into a shipboard romance on the love boat. After, newlyweds who desire eternal life face a deadly trade-off on Fantasy Island. Now stay tuned for the Renegades next, followed by the Gold Monkey.